Good morning. Let's get going. All right. So we had a correction day yesterday. We all know that. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, got a little worse toward the end of the day. Good morning. Good morning. And so now we got an uptrend and prices are starting to pull back a little bit. And so when we look at turns, and I do look at some of the details of the turn, meaning um, is it a breakout bar failure? Uh, how did it actually turn? And so it's not really a textbook type of failure, but it did have a little consolidation for a couple of days, that narrow range day, and, and then it popped up. What we're looking at is how much of a shock value is there to this particular turning point. And I wouldn't give this a, a high degree of shock value as, as it went up. You know, was, the closes were about the same, and then it, it pushed higher. Remember, on this day, I was kind of hoping that it would break below this low and kind of dip down and form a bottoming tail bar, which would have been a continuation pattern and, uh, you know, something that historically is much more sustainable to a move higher versus what did happen, meaning just at another up day where buyers came in. And, you know, when we look at charts, we have to look at them from the viewpoint, not so much of what we call the patterns. So, you know, as from Master Trader, we call things a bottoming tail or a 180 reversal. Um, Dan has coined like a pattern like this, the bear sandwich, right? Or the bull sandwich, I forget. I always get confused with that. But anyway, it's a big red bar. Uh, with two big green bars adjacent to either side. So I guess, you know, the bear is the sandwich inside here. Anyway, that three bar reversal, especially with a bottoming tail, is a strong signal that prices are going to go higher. Topping tails within an uptrend, <clears throat> they get less respect, uh, weight, so to speak, because the trend is up. And this bounced off of the old highs, which were over to the left there. So now this type of advance is normal, and that kind of a reversal is, is normal. It's actually preferred rather than one in which it was an inside now arranged day because this is obvious. And it was green, green, little stall green, and a relatively large red bar next to the green bar. Right? So now we look for the pullback. It should continue to pull back. And now we look inside a smaller time frame like this and say, where should it pull back to? Now, when we change time frames, we change the pictures of what we see. And so we see multiple bars up. And, and the reversal here was, what do you see on the 60-minute chart? You should see what seems you know, obvious now as a distribution pattern. Right. And the right shoulder there. And I guess right there is the break, which it's inching under right at the moment. Now, one of the, the tools that we have, and it's a little bit more of an esoteric types, is that, you know, you look at a head and shoulders pattern like this, and you kind of eyeball measure this, so we can kind of just see it's kind of, what, 29, whatever, 12 maybe down to here. Oh, anyway, we just go to go like this, right? Just kind of eyeball the next level, maybe a little bit more, which might put us somewhere down here. Now, we do have this level. That's probably going to come into play. And we got this little shelf here, right there. Now, under a normal pullback, and we can see this level here is like, what, 2885-ish, 28. 85-ish. Yeah, so it would put us somewhere around here. And just looking at the daily chart, a pullback into this level in a bullish trend would put us right about there. This is what we call minor support. So the acronym that we use, um, minor support. But in a very bullish trend, it won't get down there. Matter of fact, even though we're looking at this with this type of analysis, saying, well, this is a probable point where it could get to, right? The most bullish trends surprise us, and they don't pull back very much. 
As whereas we could have a little bit of a down day. It might start as a down day and it might turn into a bottoming tail bar. We don't know. And that's where bar by bar analysis comes in to help us as a tool. I mean, here we're starting the day with this analysis uh, showing this head and shoulders top type of measurement that could put it at a turning point. We look at multiple time frames and, and hear the daily and say that this would be a probable point because, you know, the trend is up where it could turn and this is new all time highs, so on and so forth. And this is where we could be looking for a turn and if prices got there, we could then go down to even a five minute chart intraday and look for some type of a pattern, which could look like that, or it could look like that on the five minute chart. In other words, these pictures that we use as events to take action are applicable in smaller time frames when they line up with the analysis as I'm explaining it to you. Okay. So let's remove this and look at where other markets are at. Because we look, we look for synergy between them to see is there relative strength, is there relative weakness, is there something else that could change my bias as to what's going on. So we see the NASDAQ futures showing some relative strength. Whereas well, we did get the wider range bar and the other day, which suggests the end of the move. Remember we did, Dan and I did the MT live day and we talked about wide range bars and here you go, a wide range bar ending a move. Now ending a move doesn't mean end of trend, just means slowing of momentum. And here, this is what this appears to be is slowing a momentum like it should continue to pull back. And here's minor support, these overlapping opens and closes here at 25 and 78, 25. That's probably right around here. No, yeah, 25, 78, thereabouts. Yeah, there you go, right about there. So here's a concept for master trader technical strategies to understand on multiple time frames. Overlapping opens and closes. This is what we have right there. Right? You can see it. Overlapping ov opens and closes will look like a consolidation in a smaller time frame. So as I look at this higher time frame and I see that, I think to myself, okay, that is a possible turning point to where if prices pull back there, buyers should step up. Why on this chart? Because intraday, we've got a base. And if it breaks below here, it kind of opens up the door to, this isn't a lot of support, but, you know, there's something there. And then we come down to, you know, the minor support and the 20MA is there, and those are other reference points. But we'll take this a day at a time and a, a piece at a time and see what shapes up as this all plays out. The Dow is down 59, um, beginning to pull back. There was some resistance here. That's why that line's here. And uh, here's, this, here's the little shelf of support right there. So 25,900 could be a turn. And this line right here, and the top of that topping tail is 25,883. Must be. Yeah, that's right there. That's why I have that line right there intersecting the, that's the top of the topping tail and the consolidation. Now let me point out to you what, there's another little lesson right here. And we love to give you guys little lessons. When prices moved up to the top of that topping tail, which was right here on that day, this sideways move was bullish because rather than pull back I remember I said really bullish markets or, you know, where buyers are really in control, they don't pull back. They go sideways at resistance. And that's what we call bullish price action. So rather, let me get that out of the way, rather than pull back from that high, it went sideways. And that's how you objectively read who's in control. So as we participate in the market and we say, well, what if we had bought down here? and prices ran up to that prior high. The normal thought would be sellers are there, maybe I should take my money. Maybe I should take half of my money and hold on and see what happens. So now we objectively look what's happening. 
without any indicators, just watching the bars, right? bar by bar in the price action and saying, hey, it tried to go down and it sprung right back up again. It stalled, it sprung right back up again. It's not even coming down to minor support. Buyers are aggressive here. It should continue to go higher. And the next comment comes, well, higher to where? Look to the left. It's quite systematic. And then we'll see. Now it looks like this is what's directly to the left and where the Dow futures may pull back to. And bonds are up a little bit. Well, they had gapped and they reversed. Well, I'm not sure what you're saying, Brian. If one wide bar comes along, well, everything that we study is in hindsight to understand price action. None of, none of it says that I know what the next bar is going to be. Right? None of us know the future. We just, look at, we just look at a pattern, you know, sometimes I call them events in a situation like this. So here, this red bar and this little inside bar said prices were going down, correct? Right? And a consolidation after a drop, building up where it could have popped up and it couldn't. And then it ripped right back up again. And this is a pattern that we teach, we understand as being a downside shakeout. Downside shakeouts are bullish and suggest prices are going to go up. Now, when it happens, that doesn't guarantee it's going to go up. But, you know, after studying 1,000, 5,000, 10,000 charts, as I have, and seeing this happen over and over again, my assumption is it's going to repeat. But if I buy on this green bar and the next bar is a red bar that goes like that, I'm like, shit, that one ain't working out. I better run. So I always have a this is what's happening. This is what should happen. And if it doesn't happen, this is what I'm going to do. You know, that, that's the, the short part of the trading plan. You know, and of course, money management and, and so on in multiple time frames. But, you know, that, that's the essence of a solid plan to say, this is what I think is going to happen based on such and such. Let me see what it does. So I'll bet some money on that. Confirmations like several. My way of looking at things, Brian, and teaching is, is it's systematic, yes, but it's also flexible because if, if you view things as being, and, and a lot of technical analysis education is taught this way, as it being an absolute, meaning, you know, this particular pattern will do that. This indicator will lead and say, this is what's going to happen. And this alignment of such and such, this is what's going to happen. All right. So we look at things in, in that way, as I explain the patterns, but we have tools that allow us to objectively look at information so that we change our mind. One of the biggest hurdles for technical investors and traders is denial of, of what is, meaning here's the moment. And you won't accept it because you're risking money and it's not going your way. So, you know, we have various tools that we build on to keep us honest. That's one way of putting it. All right. Go, uh, oil. All right. Here's pretty big correction there down to the 200. And then it retraced all the way back. And now it's, uh, you know, coming right up into this pretty stiff resistance there. I think it looks like a, uh, you know, a moment in time here where oil, it's either got to do the bullish thing, you know, like the intraday chart I showed you, where it, it consolidates. And uh, then can go higher because it's got the void above. Or does it do you know, some of the crazy stuff that's been going on coming up to the top of a range and then collapsing back down to the bottom of the range. 
And we'll see. But clearly, this type of pattern is not one in where you'd want to enter this type of price pattern. Gold, you know, consolidating here at resistance, I guess somewhat bullish price action after the bounce. But as I explained yesterday, with the uh, the drop in the U.S. dollar, you know, gold moving inverse with that, that made sense, especially with the pattern that had formed itself. And, you know, tech is down a little bit, you know, it's a little bit of a down morning. And uh, just looking at the ETFs here, aerospace and defense is, is up. Well, it doesn't really look like it's up on the intraday. And I guess maybe it's up a little from the sell-off. So not a, not a big deal there. But um, anyway, spent a little bit extra time there on education this morning, which I think is good for everybody. And I'll let Dan take over. Good morning, Greg. All right. Good morning, everyone. 